Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. A lot of you may be familiar with the neat King Bee and Worker Bee microphones that gained popularity not long ago because of their quirky design and the good performance and value they offered. I've actually checked out the King Bee myself on this channel, and unfortunately it wasn't long at all before they were discontinued. But luckily, the company was working on replacements, and they have since released the second generation of King Bee and what we have here, the Worker Bee. I've seen mostly favorable reports, though the enthusiasm does seem a bit cooler than what it was for the originals. They definitely have a less unique look now, though I'm not sure everyone really liked the look of the originals. In the case of the Worker Bee, many of the included accessories seem to have been lost in the effort to keep costs down, but performance is similar enough that it has been speculated that they're basically the same guts in a different housing. I've also seen a couple reports of a constant or intermittent hum on the new Worker Bee 2. So I thought it would be interesting to do something a little bit different for this video. Typically, a microphone comparison is all about sound, but I thought it would be fun to actually open these microphones up and see how they compare and how they differ. I also wanted to see if there was any likely culprit that could cause a hum, potentially a ground issue. Sound Speeds had a hum that came and went when he tapped on the microphone, which sounds to me like an intermittent ground issue. So I was curious to see what the inside of this mic looks like. Finding the Worker B2 was easy enough. I actually found it on sale for a great price on Amazon. For the original, I found a complete setup in great condition on eBay. So let's dig into these and see what we can find. Starting with the back of the capsule housings, they're held on with three screws on both microphones, so removing that is easy enough. Inside they are similar, but there are slight differences in almost everything. <laughs> The capsules themselves are very similar, but they are not the same capsule. They very well may have the same specs and quality, but the capsules are different. The original has yellow plastic, and it does have uh, the brand Neat molded into it. The new one is very similar, but it is very slightly different overall. It's a different color and even the little tabs and electrical connectors are slightly different. The capsule on both microphones is mounted in this sort of trilobal rubber mount and the one on the new microphone is slightly thicker and I don't know if that's the only difference or if this one is also a slightly stiffer rubber um, but the the mount is much stiffer on the new microphone, whereas it is much more flexible and pliable on the old one. Inside the rear grills of both of them, it's just sort of a, an open cell, kind of large cell foam. So those are both pretty much the same on the two microphones, but inside the front grill, in front of the capsule, they're quite different. On the new microphone, it's a sort of a fine mesh foam but on the old microphone, it's actually a very fine metal screen. I can't say that either one of these is definitely better or worse. They're just different. It does look like the older design was probably a little bit more expensive to manufacture, but does that translate into actual better performance in you know practical terms? I don't know. As for the body of the microphones, the new Worker Bee has this nut on the bottom, which holds the housing together. Out of the box it was very tight, which isn't a bad thing, but it did mean that I was not going to get it apart without some kind of tool. I ended up having to make a tool to get this loose. There is a section around the rim of the nut and on the bottom of this outer casing that is left free of paint, and that's good because that will allow an electrical connection between the two for a ground path. However, there is still a little bit of paint on the bottom that seems to have um, you know, made it partway across this ground section, so there is a tiny bit of paint down there. Mine didn't hum, so I don't think it was causing an issue on mine, um, but you know, if, it was, if there was another one out there where that problem was worse, maybe that's a factor. Inside there is a little metal spring tab that seems intended to ground the frame against the body of the microphone when that goes into place. 
Since the screw that holds that tab to the board goes into the frame, that should also transfer ground into the frame of this microphone, and that nut, when it threads onto here, should be grounded, and then it should be, you know, because of the, the clean spot, um, you know, on the nut and on this frame, ground should have that path to go also. So technically this thing should, in theory, be very well grounded. However, there is some paint overspray inside the body of this uh, outer casing, you know, essentially right where this thing would rub up against it. And this is a little bit loose. Um, it's not super loose, but I didn't loosen that screw and you can see this thing is just kind of, kind of wiggly on there. Again, mine didn't hum and I'm sure the vast majority of these out there are fine, but I can imagine a scenario where a wiggly tab and a little bit of extra overspray either on, you know, this part of the case or on the, the little nut that holds it together, something like that could end up resulting in a bad ground, which would cause a hum to come and go when you tap on it. I can't say for sure that's what's happening, but that's at least my hypothesis for how it could. Other than that, it's mostly tidy in here. Um, there are some solder joints that are clearly hand done and they don't look amazing, but they don't look cold, they don't look too bad. I'm sure it's not gonna cause a problem. The original is both easier and more difficult to get apart. Uh, it's easier because the bottom of the case is just held on with four screws, no special tools needed. However, the wires for the capsule are fairly short and they're actually, um, there's some glue on them inside here to keep the wires tight and snug and keep them from rattling, which is nice, but it means that you don't have that extra slack and so you can't actually get this very far open. I considered snipping the wires so I could pull this out and then soldering things back together when I was done, but I decided this was a good enough look. Obviously the board has a different shape and the components have a slightly different layout because of that, but based on what I can see, the two microphones have the same circuit design and utilize the same components. Pretty much the only difference I saw is that um, the capacitors, um, just a little bit slightly larger capacitors on this one and the capacitors are different brands <laughs> but that's pretty much the only difference I could find other than the worker B the original if you look up in there there is an LED up in there and that LED is actually powered with 48 volt phantom power and it shines through this little uh, B logo here so this little B actually lights up yellow when the microphone has 48 volt phantom power applied so that's kind of kind of neat and it is the only thing significantly different in terms of the electronics inside between these two. And as for the ground on the original, you can probably see the ground wire actually comes up and goes to a ring terminal which is clamped underneath the screw that holds the whole upper capsule assembly to the body of the mic. So this uh, that ground wire just goes up and is clamped right in there so and this is the whole body is all one piece so it's all one ground so that's how the ground works on this all right i got them both back together before putting the worker b2 back together i polished a little bit of the paint off of the inside of the case and adjusted that tab a little bit so if this one ever develops a hum then obviously it isn't a grounding issue or at least not from that issue but I didn't have any hum issues before, so I don't expect any problems. So there you go. Those are the internals of the original Worker B and the new Worker B2. And just because no microphone comparison would be complete without a sound test, I'm going to finish up this video recording into both and switching back and forth between the two. Overall, I think both of these microphones are built fine for the price. I do think the original was a better value when it was being sold for under $100. It has the slightly more quirky design, which I think is endearing. It has the little illuminated B, the boxy design, and the yellow stripe. But I know that there will be people that prefer the more standard look for their setup, and there's nothing wrong with the look of the new microphone. But the original also came with a pop filter and a shock mount, which the new microphone does not. So again, I think the original was a little bit better value when you could get it for a similar price. But that's not to say the new one is a terrible value. It's built okay, and it sounds pretty good and it will probably end up being a good microphone for a lot of people. But with the accessories and the quirky design, there's suddenly not much to differentiate this microphone from the rest of the competition in the $100 price range. However, if you can find it for $60 like I did, 
I think it's pretty hard to beat for that price. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. It's a little bit thicker, and I don't know if that's the only difference or if it's also the... Also the...